Good morning, everybody, and happy Resurrection Day. I like that better than each Resurrection Day, and we're going to be talking about that. Before we begin, let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Gracious Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. We thank you for all your blessings. We thank you, dear Lord, for your grace. We thank you so very much for your patience with us, dear Lord. We know we are undone, and we try our best to be the best Christians we can possibly be. We pray for courage. We pray, Heavenly Father, that... As we increase our faith and understanding in you, that we apply these and be the Christians you want us to be. Be with us all today and be with me as I bring forth this lesson. And we ask for traveling grace for those who are on their way. This prayer we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right, a couple things. Now, uh, just so you know, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of text and uh uh, a lot of historic stuff, so uh, I can make available this presentation, and you can also get a hold of it if you go to our church app by going on that QR code. Um, and uh, what we're going to learn today, basically, is what's called the unbroken chain or the history of the church. I've borrowed a lot of information from a good brother in Christ. By the name of Luke Griffin, he um, I think he gave this presentation at Policy in the Cool Pit because the question was asked, you know, when we talk about the church, what generally comes to mind in the general public is what? When you talk about the church. Yeah. Catholic church. Catholic church. So where does that put us? Um, and we're going to see that when and we talked about this before. When you're talking with people, it's good to get, you know, sit down and get definitions. What do you mean by church? What do you mean by God? What do you mean by baptism? And see, now you can understand. When you sit down with a person, you can see where they are coming from. Because our understanding of things like the church, baptism, um, and other things is totally different from the person we're talking to. And so that's why you have to be patient with those you're talking to because they're coming from a whole different mindset than what we are. And we're going to talk about how it's important for us to stay with the pattern. Now, I've borrowed a lot of stuff. I got a couple of things in here, but I've borrowed a lot of information from Brother Griffin because I'm, I, I am of the um, notion that why reinvent the wheel? This man has done extensive study, and it, it's interesting. He got a lot of his source material from two books. If you want to take the time to read this, one is a book that they actually had um, in uh, Church of Christ School called The Eternal Kingdom, and this is by uh, Maddox, F.W. Maddox. goes into detail about apostasy and also traces of the kingdom by a person, uh, the author is Keith Sisman. And again, both of these look at the history uh, of the church. Because a lot of times when people think of the Church of Christ, they think of the Restoration period. So th this, is what, this is what people, when we talk about the history of the church, we understand first century. We read that right in Scripture. On the day of Pentecost, boom, AD 33, that's when the church began with the first gospel sermon by uh, our brother in Christ, Brother Peter, who gave the uh, uh, gospel sermon. Now, when we go through the books of Acts and we go through the epistles, we see the spread of the church. We also see the persecution of the church. What, we, what we're going to cover, and I think he covers from the basically the second century up to the restoration period, which there is sort of like this, we don't know and the Church of Christ, boom, comes to mind in the Restoration period with people like Stone and, and Campbell. People used to call Church of Christ members Camelites. You know, you're, uh, you're one of the Camelites people. Uh, but it's important for us to know this, keep this in mind. There's nothing that we teach in the church that can be attributed that's a word, right? Attributed to a human being. 
We follow a pattern. We follow a pattern. As a matter of fact, it says, if indeed you continue in the faith, from the establishment of steadfast, and not and not shifting the, uh, from the hope of the gospel that you that you have heard, which proclaimed in all creation under heaven. Now this just gives us the spring. This gives us the spring uh, of the church. And going back to this. When you restore something, what's the difference between reformation and restoration? To re- go, go, go. Okay, b- both of you guys. Reformation is to recreate or reform what you already have. Absolutely. Ask, uh, what about rest, uh, um, restoration? What's that? Trying to do what originally was intended. Right. Now, if... if, if uh, Say you come across an antique car. Do you want to reform that thing or you want to restore it? Restore it. Yeah, you, you you get a Model T and put spinners on it and see <laughs> and see how much money you get. But if you restore it to its original, mm-hmm. original, that's why you know go to an antique road show. They don't want you fixing anything. Mm-hmm. But I see this this panel here. It's all nice and pop. Yeah, it broke down, and so I put that on there. They don't want that. They don't don't touch it. Um, and if there is some rest, if there is some uh, restoration, they want to bring it back as close as humanly possible to the original. That's where you get your. That's where you get your money. And so, what the restoration period did, where people like Stone and people like Campbell, they they looked at Scripture, and they looked at what the what. The denominations were doing, and they want, wanted to restore the church back to the pattern that we read about in Scripture. We're not Campbellites. We are Christians. We model ourselves after the first century church. There's going to be changes. There's changes in clothes. There's changes in you know locations. There's changes in buildings. But what should never, ever change is the doctrine. So, so we're going to look at some things. It's a, it's a lot of uh, material, um, and Walter, to his wisdom, says you may want to do this in two parts. And I'm thinking, I'm looking through this. I said, oh yeah, that's a good idea. That's a, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, and <clears throat> this is one thing that you can remember. <clears throat> You're going to see a lot of names, a lot of terms. Let's be like the feds. How is that? How do they look at counterfeits? What do they study? Study the original. The original. You study the original. You can pick out the imitations. You can pick out the phonies. You you can pick out the counterfeits. If you got the original, if you know the original, so we don't have to spend hours and hours studying about these different religions. All the hours and hours. It's a good idea to understand where they're coming from, because as a Christian, just like Peter, Peter's Peter's audience primarily were Jews. And then when Paul went out, his audience was Gentile. So when you look at the preaching of Peter and you look at the preaching of Paul, you see differences. Same gospel, different approach. So it's very good that you understand some of these. And uh, what's going to happen in the next quarter, we're going to have different brethren come up and talk about the various uh, religions to give you an idea. Not to mock, not to point finger. We came from some stuff too. Mm-hmm. And we were dedicated to some stuff too that was not of the Bible. What brought us to the Bible is okay, I obey from the heart that form of doctrine, that pattern of doctrine that was delivered to me. So that's what we're doing. <clears throat> and so when we when we look at like Matthew 16 and 18, this is important. On the coast of Caesarea Philippi, that's when Jesus asked the question, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say you're Elias, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're one prophet. So you say that I am. Peter said, that Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, uh, Simon Borjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now we, we can we can go into and when we give the presentation about Catholicism, we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, we can go into why Peter is not that rock. 
different Greek word, Petra and Petros. So one's a small petal, one's a rock. We're not talking about Peter. So the church wasn't built on Peter. So it's important for us to note that. We're going to get more into that. The key thing is, there's a lot of meanings given into, you know, what does the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. And when we read, when we get into this lesson, we'll see that when apostasy came, the church, although it was persecuted, was not prevailed against. Well, Brother Tony, how do you know that? We are here. We're of the Church of Christ. We're here. So what does it tell us about what happened back in the day? It did not prevail against. You know, if, if, if I go off and start a new religion and start baptizing babies, okay, fine. The Church of Christ will prevail. It doesn't rest on any man's shoulders. No matter how prolific, how great he, a speaker he is, and believe me, there are some great prolific speakers out there who are way better than me. Because I've sat and I've heard them. And I go to polish in the pulpit and they just and just, you know, I hear these men. I said, I need to go study some. Just amazing. But even as great as they are, the church doesn't rest on them. So the gates of hell, no apostasy will ever prevail against it. If it's only three people left in the world. That's following the pattern. You continue to do it. Because when Jesus comes back, as it, as it says in uh, Ephesians, He is the Savior of the body. Make sure you are part of the body when He comes back. Okay, going going on. Now, it's a lot of history. We're going to talk about, give you some dates, give you, give you an idea. So we're talking about the first century all the way up to Restoration. And so you're going to see 2nd, 3rd century where you see apostasy entering into the church. Yet and still, you're also going to see men following the pattern. That's important. That's very important. So 2nd century, 19th century, letters of encouragement, uh, Christian apologists responded to heathenism. So the, all the way back to the second century when apostasy came, there were some letters. Now, we do we know for absolutely sure where the church was and all of this? No. The key thing is, was the pattern being followed? That's the most important thing. And from letters like this, and we're going to see some other examples, yes, the pattern that we read in Scripture was being followed. And that's the important thing. Follow the pattern. And again, if you want this whole presentation, let me know. I'll send it to you directly. <clears throat> okay, then this 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 is what this is what I was talking about. But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, but become obedient from the heart to that. Now this is a ESV standard of teaching, King James version, form of doctrine. Another version, standard. Of or, or form of teaching. This is standard of teaching to which we were committed. We obey from the heart. A standard of teaching that was taught to us. And where do we and where was the standard in scripture? In the Bible. That's right. Yes. I like the analogy you used earlier about antique road show where they don't want you to change anything of the object. That's right. But there's another thing they're always talking about. You know, I watch that occasionally. They talk about the providence of the item. Where did it originate? Very and important. I think that really is mm -hmm. neat when we look at where do the standards originate and they originate in scriptures. So it's kind of continuing that idea along. Excellent, excellent point. Where did it come? If, now, there's one thing to have a, a uh, something from the Civil War era, but it's another thing to have it and it's signed by Robert E. Lee. Okay, now that's, that's, that's going to bring some. That's going to bring some. Uh, it, it's like like if I go if I go and get a baseball bat uh, from you know the twenties or whatever. Uh, but if I get a baseball bat that's signed by Babe Ruth, statue page, much more valuable. So that's a very good point uh, that we have. The Bible that we have was written by men moved by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> It did not come from them just sitting up, okay, I'm going to pretend and write that. And that's a whole other lesson, too. That's an incredible lesson 
right then why we should believe the Bible. Why we should believe the Bible. A lot, quite often, now the Bible, God, first of all, let me say this, God does not call everybody to be a uh, uh, apologist, which is, that's a Greek word that's really not a fun word because it, it symbolizes apologize. We don't apologize. Because uh, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Um, and I don't know where I was going with that, so we're going to leave it there. <laughs> all right. Now some, but, but that, that's a good point that Walter, Walter made. I have to say this because it's so funny. This person had a, a Civil War era um, saber. And the guy was looking at it. Apparently it came from a manufacturer back in the day that was very, very rare. So the guy was looking at it. And he says, where'd you get this? And the man said, oh, I found it in my, I found it in my barn and stuff. And he was looking at it. And he saw some stains on it. He says, what have you been doing that? Oh, me and my buddy, we, we would chop melons with it. <laughs> and the guy stopped and slowly looked up at that. He said, don't do that. <laughs> you found this in your garage. This sword can buy you, I think he said 20 or 25 garages. Um, and so he, oh boy, this is, this is important. And for some of us who came to the church late, Maybe that was the feeling also. When you start reading, it said, wow, I didn't know the importance of this. I didn't know this was here. And when we started about Jesus Christ, we understand, I didn't know the level of his sacrifice. People brush him off as of this or that. You didn't know all of these things. So that's, and when we teach people, we, people, we want them to come to that realization too. Now, some things that kind of led to apostasy um, or or led to the formation of different sects. It was tough being a Christian back in the day. There's some. There here are some very early accusations. This is back in Roman times. They said that you 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 people of the were atheists it, because you know we didn't believe in all these different gods. And you got modern day atheists saying that um, you you people who believe in God, you're atheists hundred times over. See, atheism believes, you don't believe that there is a God. And so when Christians didn't believe in um, uh, a Zeus and uh, the, you know, Mercury, Mercury and all these different Poseidon, uh, they didn't believe in that. So, so you, guys are, you guys are atheists. Now, the, they were also accused of being incestual, incest. Now, Sister Paget is my wife, but she's also my sister in Christ. They could make that connection. That's essential. You're, you're having you're having relations with your your relative, um, and cannibals. I don't know where that came from. Communion. Communion. This is my body. They said, "Are oh, y'all eating the body and the blood? Are oh, y'all cannibalism? Now, killing their own children. Now, why would they think that?" Um, <clears throat> I wrote the term down and I forget what it is. That was a <clears throat> that was something that the Romans did. And I don't know if you saw the movie The Three Hundred. If you had a, a child that was number one, unfortunately, ladies, sometimes if it was a female or if it had any type of deformity, you would get rid of it. You would expose it. You kill it on the spot. Expose me. You just throw it out and just you know let. Which is another thing why Christians were so important back in the day because the Christians would go and find these children, bring them in and take care of them. That's, 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 that's just <laughs> the sign. But for those who, okay, I want this child. A lot of times it's a male child. Sometimes it's a female. Most of the male child. They would go to some temple and they would, they would sprinkle quote unquote holy water over the child. And they were seeing that the Christians weren't doing this. And so the alternative, if you're not doing this, then you must be killing them. Like everybody else who don't want children. But I know this person, and I saw their child. Their child is healthy, so they must be killing them. You, you see the, the, the analogy, uh, some of the accusations, because people didn't know about Christianity. And Christianity was different from the world. So these were some of the accusations 
that they were coming across. Also, when we get into Second Thessalonians 2 and 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall, shall not come, except there be a falling away first. And when we look at this, yes, people fell away from the teachings of the church. Now, the first century, okay, we, we saw church growth, especially on the day of Pentecost. And when you read the book of Acts, we see the church growing. Primarily, it was Jewish, because that's where they initially went to. They went to a Jewish uh, audience, because that's what Jesus told them to do. Go to the lost sheep of Israel first. Then we see Cornelius. He's the first Gentile. And then who was sent to preach primarily to the Gentiles? Paul. 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 So Paul would go to his missionary tours. And we've studied Corinthians. Corinthians was a mixed congregate. People are like, oh, you, y'all. The mixed mixture was they, they had Greeks and they had Romans. I mean, Greeks and, and Jewish people from different backgrounds. Trying to stay in harmony. Uh, we're going to see that the Bible was very prophetic in this, and there was a great falling away. And uh, also, you should earnestly contend for the faith, the faith, definite article, singular. You need to contend for the faith. That lets us know there's a pattern that we need to follow. And 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 and, and in this uh, and in this context, he's not talking about. You know, my, my personal faith. He's talking about the faith. The, the church is what he's talking about. So we see apostasy and the falling away because why? <laughs> people didn't contend for the faith. We see a falling away. Uh, why? We see a falling away because by no means uh, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away. So we see this a lot of times. The primary reason why we see this is because of that. Now, where did all of this falling away start? Almost at the beginning. Almost at the beginning. When Paul went to Ephesus, when he was about to leave Ephesus, who did he call? Did he call the whole congregation? No, he called the elders of the church. The elders of the church. The elders of the church. And he says, do what? Look amongst yourselves. Why should I look amongst myself? And we're going to talk about that some more. Leadership, leadership and organization, is about the grievous wolves are going to come in. Apostasy did not start from the outside. That's right. The falling away did not, there was no invasion of the falling away aliens that, that came all of a sudden and just poof the mines. And see, here's a key point. That's why you pray for your elders. Leadership can be the number one problem. Also, it can be the number one strength. You pray for leadership. Pray for me. Pray for Walter. Pray for Carrie. Pray for Adi. Pray, 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 pray. Because Satan is constantly busy. All the stuff we're about to get into started in in the church. The falling away started in the church. And so when we get into this quote unquote dark ages of the church, we're getting into the time when uh, men left their calling and men started to, to adapt. You, you know where the greatest apostasy started is when persecution subsided. Because, you know, when somebody's trying to kill you, you ain't looking to form a choir. You ain't doing that. You're hiding in the basement. And, and everything now, your, your existence, your family, depends on your faith in God. So you pray. That's why your people don't want suffering. That's the benefit. I don't want to suffer. Don't get me wrong. That's the benefit of suffering. Why? It brings us closer to God. When you take away that suffering... And, and this is what happened. <clears throat> People started looking around, adopting these pagan rituals and bringing them into the church. Why? Nobody ain't trying to kill us. So I, I'm free. I'm free to do things. That's why leadership can be the greatest problem because that's where it starts. 
men not adhering to the pattern that we read about has also the greatest strength because you find men who take this very important your shepherd you're leading the flock shepherds also protect the flock from wolves from those grievous wolves that can come in um, and so what happened with the leadership all this started forbidding to marry uh, forbidding the foods now again we're going to get more into that with the Catholic Church and Carrie I know you're going to touch on the Catholic Church so I got a lot of source material <laughs> for it because it, you cannot you can when you talk about the history of the church you cannot avoid this some of our Catholic friends understand this yeah, I want to make this very clear. Don't go running and throwing this in their face because, see, a lot of them don't know their history. Church of Christ people don't know their history. They think we started back in the Restoration with Campbell and Stone. When were y'all established? Uh, 33 AD. And the whole concept of not having a central office, a, a headquarters per se, some people can't wrap their minds around it. I remember talking to somebody, and he says, no, that, that, that's not right. Who do you report to? I said, well, you know, uh, at the time we were at a church that didn't have elders. He says, we're autonomous. And he said, yeah, that's not, he just, he just couldn't wrap. That's not right. You need to have this headquarters. But see, when you, when you, or organize a headquarters and you go back to this you're going to have a problem because now you're going to have some stuff being instituted and because there's a breaking away give you some ideas now you can go and study these folk I just put some themes you see all of this stuff starting in the first second century even get into the third century where people were breaking away and these groups were being what, what, I don't. I don't see these groups anymore. Uh, well, you know that's, that's that's what happens when you don't follow the truth. Yeah, brother. Brother Tony, isn't it something wonderful about autonomy? Because if if one church does wrong, that don't mean all of them. Are wrong. Amen. That's a beautiful thing about it. That's a beautiful God thing. God always reserves some people who will keep His word. There will always be a remnant. A faithful remnant. Even when Babylon came and you know took Judah away, there was always a faithful remnant. Mm -hmm. Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. That you, you see that faithful <coughs> remnant, and we can we can go off the deep end all we want to. Uh, that's not going to happen as long as I'm here. But, but if something just invade my brain and I start wanting to do some stuff that's not of, of the truth, uh, we, we can agree with that. If, if Walter and Carey start coming up with some crazy stuff, the church can agree with that all they want to. But it's not going to affect the pattern that's in the scripture. And I, and you know, when, when, when you when you look at all the apostasy and stuff, yeah, the, the the preachers and the leaders will be judged, but also the congregation, because mm -hmm. we have the facts, we have the pattern. People just don't read. But the way. I remember about twenty years ago, I was I had this job and put nothing in that about that. But anyway, I was engaged in conversation about the church, and, and uh, I was asked when the church starts, and I said thirty three years, but I wasn't. Knowledgeable enough to mm -hmm. to delve into it, mm -hmm. you know. But I was at a disadvantage as a result of that. But uh, you know, and and I was also asked, well, who do you report to? Basically, I said the Bible is the sole authority, you know. And they really couldn't they couldn't understand the concept of right. this exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And so I, I, you know, I did the best I could. You know, but I, I really wasn't equipped to really deal with the, mm -hmm. the depth of their lack of knowledge. That's right. And, and see, this is a form of be ready. And, and you, you're not going to, you're not going to to hit it out of the park. Now, I, I, I study apologetics. I study, you know, all, you know, as far as 
you know, the, the, the earth and, 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 and why we, why there is a God and what formulated. The Bible doesn't call everybody to do that. Some of the best testimony you can give is your experience. Mm-hmm. That's some of the best. So why do I do it? I find it fascinating. And, and, and it just, it just, for me, it <clears throat> just solidifies my faith in Scripture. Because there's some fancy people with a lot of degrees, a lot of letters out of their name, especially messing with our children when they go to these uh, institutes of higher learning. Because the kids don't have a firm foundation. you got to know why you do what you do. That's the most important thing. And to Brother Ware's, because uh, we hear this in the church all the time, okay? Well, 33 AD. But, but let some historian hit me with, with something. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Don't make up stuff. You just tell them. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's right. Sister Shirati had to hit him. I don't know if this will help you in, in Brother Ware's situation, but I always think about when somebody says, well, who's the authority? You always say, if you want to hear the word of God, read the Bible out loud. That's right. And I just think that's a really powerful, powerful statement. Yeah. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to be an apologetic theologian with 100 degrees. You know, if you want to, if, if, if you want to know what the word of God is, if you want to uh, hear the word of God, you know, uh, or you want to hear God speak, read the Bible. If you want to hear him speak out loud, read the Bible out loud, and you're hearing the words of God. When people say the Lord spoke to me, immediately, immediately, you know, you put up danger signs. The Lord spoke to my heart on this. Now, the Lord speaks to you through when you read, and scripture comes to mind. That's the Holy Spirit working with you because you study. Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could stick our head in a Bible microwave and just keep it in there for like five seconds and come out and just, just like the, the Matrix and just, yeah. you know? But it's not like that. It's not like that. Do that again. No. I choose not to. I'm just trying to, that, that's what the, the person did. You know, they knew how to fool a helicopter. But going back to this, you see, now, you can go into detail about these different groups, these branches. The secret knowledge of true Christianity depends on mystic experience with the Spirit. And, and when you look at this, you see why a lot of the stuff that's taught now, you know, it just, it just didn't come out from anything. It has its origins. God was good, but not all powerful. You have people who think that. Now, uh, the, the novations. They defended the unity of the Godhead and the humanity of Christ. He said, well, that's good. That's good. But, but, anybody who left the church and apostate and wanted to come back, no. Doors are closed. You can't come back. That's not scriptural. No. We don't read that. We just studied uh, First and Second Corinthians. When they told, when they said, turn this person over to the devil, and then the Second Corinthians, you bring that person back and you welcome him and love him and so forth. Right. So, this is not of the Bible. And these different groups, they will branch out with their different beliefs. The Bible makes Christians and Christians only. Amen. Do not hyphenate. Please, do not hyphenate your Christianity. Amen. What do you, I'm a black Christian. No, now you are just a Christian. I'm a white Christian. No, I'm a Hispanic Christian. I go to the black church. I go to white. There, there's no such animal in Scripture. Amen. And you know this. Read the book of Acts. Anytime that mess came up, they would just cut it, squash it. No, 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 no. All right. There's divisions the among you. I'm a Paul. I'm a Paulus. Nip it in the bud. Why? Because it's just going to lead to apostasy and it's going to lead to division. <coughs> going on. Um, right here. No divisions. Speak the same things. And then, you know, it's the seeds of denominationalism, when people say, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, you know, who who were you baptized? Under whose name were you baptized? Once again, bringing it back to the pattern, you baptized of Jesus. So don't go around talking of Paul, I'm of, of, of Cephas, I'm of Apollos. Apollos, he's an eloquent speaker. I like him. He's charismatic. Uh, Paul, well, you kind of dry. And, that, and that's what they say. You know, you're not an effective speaker. <laughs> when, when I when I took this yeah, when I took this information from uh, uh, brother uh, I think his name is Keith I forget his last name already and I'm watching it 
very, very dry. Very, very. I'm talking. I'm talking. Uh, I'm talking communion cracker dry. <laughs> but the information, I looked past that and I was looking. Oh, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Good stuff. Now, a person been over there doing cartwheels and coughing up in the handkerchiefs and all that. He's saying nothing. I ain't saying anything that's of value to your soul and value to your knowledge as a child of God. Yeah. And again, Paul, with his most appropriate response, he said, I did not die for you. That's right. I did not die for you. Who? Who? And, and right, right here. I follow Paul. I follow Paulus. I follow Cephas. Or I follow. Is Christ divided? No. No. That's why we don't have hyphenated Christianity. Was Paul crucified for you? No, he was not. And see, Paul is, is saying, I wasn't crucified for you. Don't put my name in that. Or were you baptized in the name? Don't, don't say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a Paulite. If I baptize you, I'm a Tonyite. I ain't going to get you to heaven. That's a ticket right to the hot place. You know, but he, he, he close. He close. And you're going to find that. We almost, we almost, we all. But see, we don't want to be almost when it pertains to your soul. You want to be it. Follow the pattern. Some more things. Okay. People call these the church fathers. Uh, that's not a good term to use because they they don't have an apolis, uh, uh, apologetic or an apostle hierarchy. They didn't come from. The Catholic Church says, you know, popes are direct descendants. Continuation of the apostles. That's not true. Maybe the first apostle to die was, was was John. We only have we only have one example in the Bible. It's James, and then we we we, we kind of hear Peter talking about his his um, pending uh, death, and and Paul. We talked about that, you know, last last week. Um, I, I'm about to be poured out as a, as an offering. You know, I, I'm ready. Now, so we don't attribute them. But when you get these quote-unquote church fathers, and you know, I'm not going to go through it, this is what the times they lived and all this, they started to introduce things that are not of Scripture. Here's some of the things. The altar table. <clears throat> Holy days. The priesthood clergy system. What does the Bible say about the priesthood? Who are the priests? We are, we are the priests. We're a priesthood. Royal. That's from God, not me. Holy nation, purity people, chosen generation. That's what that's those are the terms God has given to us. Now you you, you got these priesthood told you ritual, original sin, infant baptism. And you see that that kind of goes back to this whole thing. Uh Oh, I, I remember the name. It, it's called lustration. That's what they call it. Lustration is when you bring your child forward and you go to some temple of some god and you sprinkle holy water on it. It's supposed to offend, uh, uh, you know, from evil spirits. And, and because they say childbirth, there might be an opportunity for evil spirits to come in, so they would go through this thing of lustration. And the Christian says, no, I'm not going to do that. Why? It's not in the Bible. And we don't have to do it. And it apparently don't work. And it, yeah. yeah. And work. Got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, you got that right. <laughs> but where did they come from? You see, you have to understand. And Carrie, I know you won't go into this. I'm just going to tap on this and run. You have to understand. When everything was good, everything, nobody's trying to kill us. Came right. out of hiding. And instead of sticking with the pattern, they start to look around, look around. Ooh, 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 I got an idea. I got an idea. And you know what apostasy, sometimes apostasy starts when Christian says, I don't see why. You don't see it because you haven't read it and you haven't studied. I don't see why. And again, it starts with the leadership. Leadership haven't studied, haven't read it. Well, you know, this is a popular thing in the church, so I don't see why we can't. I don't see why we can't. You, you know, innovative things on, on on preaching the word, innovative things on getting the gospel out. We should always look at that. We're 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 being broadcast. They didn't have this back in the day. This is not a sin. You know, we have this. 
That's not a, this is just ways, innovative ways to, 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 to do that. What you don't change is the doctrine. Amen. Amen. That's boring. That's boring. Every day, it's boring. You believe you can't confess be baptized. Snoozer, snoozer, snoozer. That puts you into Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you have all these different things. Now, opposition. Opposition start to occur. And again, I'm just touching the hem on the garment. We're going to get more into this. Uh, Ignatius of Antioch. This is his person name. Now, he had good intentions. He had good intentions. First bishop. For the congregation. Like I said, you cannot talk about history without talking about the now Catholic Church that said the first church. No, first apostate. Apostate church. Mm -hmm. Now they think they're the first church because they, they follow the lineage or the succession of apostles. Apostles were um, appointed by who? Uh, Christ. By God. Not by a group of men sitting in the room making a taking a vote. That didn't happen. And then they let you know if a pope was chosen by the smoke coming out of the chimney or what whatever. So, but because of persecution, his thought process was let's make one bishop. And so it when they come, they just come for that one. They don't mess with the others. And the world didn't know about this. <clears throat> he, unfortunately, he, they got to him. And he was martyred. They were taking him back to the authorities. And he got attacked by wild animals. And he got ate. So, but the idea stuck. <clears throat> you, see, you see what happens when you put something out there that's not of, 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 uh, of Scripture. And you put your human reasoning. Because the human reasoning, I don't see why. I don't see why we can't. <coughs> What's wrong with this? <coughs> I don't see. I don't see. You don't see because you haven't read. And what you've read, you're not committed. And you, and uh, apparently, you don't believe that it's binding. Yes, Brother Ware. I was going to say that <coughs> Satan is the author of confusion. And obviously, you know, he's, done, he's very, very mm -hmm. adept at it. You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, because you know, I feel that I know enough about the Bible to tell someone how to be saved. That's that's I mean, the I most mean, important thing. Exactly. I mean, I know that's the most important more, thing. But mm -hmm. I I have enough to tell them that. But, but obviously, Satan is that is that uh, is, is that work as well. With the same person that I'm talking to. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We've had several baptisms, and believe me, we, we work with, with folk that's been baptized with this. And and I tell them before I even baptize them, Satan's gonna be after you. Mm -hmm. And some of us have stories. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have stories too. Working on you like there's no trying to play you like a get fiddle, trying to get your mind off of the truth and bring you back on the other side. And say no scripture. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. okay. It, 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 it's it's like the Sith and Dark say, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I like Star Wars. I'm trying to bring you back onto the dark side. Dark, bring you back. Bring you back. You know, trying to use. Now, the Force, okay, you said that, that's the Word of God. But the ideas, oh boy, that's, oh, that's wonderful. That's the dark. <clears throat> that's the dark side. And so you're constantly busy, constantly busy. That's why we always pray for those who have put on Christ. Going on, um, Tertullian, and he wrote that, that's an Italian word. Um, they had opposition during this time. Now, you see this reef. Mm -hmm. Now, the reef was, they took this from idolatry. And again, a lot of things were adapted into the church to win people over. <clears throat> Some of the gods they worshipped were made saints. All this stuff. And so, the Christians wouldn't put this reef on their door. Now, now we put Christmas wreath on the door not to proclaim some, you know, false god. We do it because it's pretty. It's, it's all in the mind. We put up a Christmas tree. Why? It's pretty. We're not worshiping some sun god. Oh, when I first got in the church, boy, you didn't find one of those in in, in, in my house because no, that's paganism. I read about that in, in I think it was First Chronicles. You know, you go to Go to the forest. 
You chop down a pine tree and you decorate it and you work. I say, yeah, yeah, but I don't worship nothing. I do that because it's pretty. It's sparkly. And and yeah, Christmas comes around and I don't go oh, little lamb. Oh, da, da. No, Jesus wasn't born on December. Th- Why do you do it? Because it's fun. So it also depends on the mind. Now this, this, all of this, straight, you know, it's relative, straight from paganism. Christians saw, well, you're adapting this. And so they didn't put that on it. Yeah. Another thing that Christmas tree was for, to help us know where to go find our presents. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, that's what we call this Resurrection Day. <laughs> Brother Hall said, How foolish you have no bunny laying eggs. You ever heard of a bunny laying eggs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a bunny laying oh, eggs. Yeah. Okay, some other things. The Great Commission carried out in the first century. Again, it spread. The beautiful thing about when the persecution started, we talked about this. The word went out. The word went out across the world. And so, here's the here's the important thing you have to realize about this. No matter what, what was happening in Europe, you still had seeds of the church around the world. God knew what he was doing. The providence of God. God saw this coming in the beginning. That's right. And so when when the persecution hit, we read about that in the book of Acts, they went everywhere doing what? Preaching, Preaching the gospel. They ain't over where I ain't said, you know what they did to my house? They burned it down. I'm gonna keep quiet. You have some some like that. It's unfortunate. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna look at nothing. And you have you have folk like that. It says they ain't gonna put me because they value they value their life in here. But but you but you have some that know that this life is filled with sorrow, trouble here below. You know we we understand, that. but we also know we're sojourners. We also know that there's a much better place in heaven, and this is going to pass. So I'm going to lay treasures up in heaven. Where moth and rust don't decay. Not here. So we see across there, and now this is in this is in, to see the spread. They have documents in Britain, uh, Eusebius, fourth century wrote, and some have crossed the ocean. And the song is talking about Christians, Christians, the ocean and reach the isles of Britain. So you see in print in history. This is extra biblical stuff. That we're looking at, you see, you see the spread. So, given the time, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here. And there's a lot more information. Information. Next week, which is so important for us to realize, this we're going to see quotations from individuals in scripture, quotations in scripture, where men were being persecuted. Because they stuck with the pattern. And this is going back, this is going back in the third, fourth, fifth centuries. So the church did not just pop up during the restoration period. This mysterious, thanks for bringing this up. This mysterious area that's falling away, this this question mark, that the church was still going. Okay, let us, uh, we're going to stop there. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the truth. We thank you, dear Lord, for knowing uh, that you have given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Let us take this information, Heavenly Father, and when opportunity presents itself, when the door of opportunity is open, we can go and present this information for those who have an ear and want to hear. This prayer we ask your dear son's name.